All right, and welcome to our latest uh, episode of Code Corner. Um, I'm Ryan Mayfield from Mayfield Renewables, and today I have uh, our senior PV system designer, Ryan Heller, with me uh, to talk about the NEC 705.12 B36. So I'll actually jump into the end of the B3 section and want to talk about the connections to um, panels that have um, feed through lugs. This is a really common installation that we see. Um, you know, we see a lot of systems that are, have meter mains and they have feed through lugs that go and then feed a sub panel in the garage or somewhere else in the house. And the solar connection is a heck of a lot easier a lot of times if you can get inside that, that meter main. Um, but the issue becomes how do we treat that downstream, the downstream um, uh, panel, conductors, all those things. So in 2020, we have this language here. Um, so kind of cut um, all the way to the end here. So it's this connections on the bus bars um, that supply connect supply lugs connected to feed through conductors. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of go through what the scenarios are in a, a couple images. Um, but the, the big thing to recognize here is that it gets referenced back to 705.12B1. 12 and that talks about connections to feeders. Um, and then the other part of this is if we are putting in an overcurrent device uh, to protect at the feed through lugs, um, the downstream conductors and panels, uh, then we're actually able to utilize the 120% the rule um, in 705.12B32. So, um, but let's look at a couple images here, which I think it'd be a lot easier to, to talk about than, than using just the code language. So, what we have in this situation is, so we have our, um, our main panel uh, there right in the middle of the, the image, have a PV system coming in and making a connection on a 40 amp breaker. And then there's the feed through lugs that go downstream to, in this case, an MLO, a main lug only panel uh, that is you know, then distributing most of the, the loads in the house. And so one of the things that we have to be careful of, or be aware of at least, is when we make this connection using this 40 amp breaker, we now have two sources of power on that feeder that's going downstream to the distribution sub panel. And so as we're showing in the image here, we would have the 200 amps from the utility, 40 amps from our solar. So we have a potential of 240 amps um, that, that feeder could see. And so we have to size the feeder appropriately. And, and of course, in most, if you come into a retrofit situation, that feeder is going to be at a 200 amp because that's what the original installation was. Um, and so upsizing that conductor might be um, next to impossible, or it might just be very, very costly. So, you know, that's, this would be one way. And so this gets right back into the earlier, the 705.12B1 rules. And so that's what uh, what we're seeing here, uh, this is in the 705.12B1, it says you can do this and you can have multiple sources of power. Uh, you just have to have your downstream equipment rated for, for that of value. Yeah, so um, I'm going to jump in here and just say that it's, it's great, in my opinion, that they're now addressing this. Um, I feel like in in past code cycles it, it just really wasn't talked about and you come in and land a breaker on your your main panel and you're using the 120 percent rule and you got your breaker at the bottom and so you think you're good but then there's those feed through lugs and it's kind of like well how far down the line do i need to have my breaker at the bottom end uh right in order to be safe and code compliant right right and so and to that point um so by pointing us back to B31, we have this ability to put in overcurrent device uh, to limit the amount of current that can flow uh, on those feeder conductors from the free through lug now. And so um, th this is what um, we looked at previously in feeder connections. And so this is a, a similar type of thing where you have an overcurrent device net on that conductor on that um, section and now that, that, that section of conductor, the distribution sub panel, everything downstream is properly protected. Can't see more than what it was originally rated for. Um, and then the, the other part of the B36 section 
says that if you have this and you have that overcurrent device, then you can adhere to for your point of interconnection, that 40 amp breaker uh, can follow the rules um, of B31 through B33, um, which are uh, just kind of gives us the different applications for where to put that breaker, how to size it. Um, and the most common one in this scenario is going to be B32, which is what we just refer to as the 120% rule. Yeah. And so uh, that 200 amp breaker box there that was added in, um, a lot of installers might want to just look at that sub distribution panel and, and either say, oh, it has a main breaker or let me put in a main breaker there and I should be good because it's protecting me. Um, but you really, the way the code talks, you need to have that overcurrent protection device on the supply end of the feed through feeders. So you want to put that uh, over by the main service panel so that you're, you're protecting everything downstream. Yeah, that language is um, the way they put that in there. Um, definitely makes it says it says exactly that what you were just saying. So um, again, I think we've said in previous you know code corners, always talk to your AHJ. Um, you know before you go through and do uh, too much. Um, if that distribution sub panel uh, is not a, a long distance, um, then you may be able to get some some waivers, but definitely just it talks about that connection being at the supply end of the feeder. So that's a, a pretty important distinction to make um, when you're looking at this code section. Okay, uh, so that's you know B36. Um, if you have any questions um, on this or other codes, uh, happy to um, talk to you about that. Uh, if you have some system designer engineering support that we can help you with, that's uh, something we do here at Mayfield Renewables. And then also we do educational content around codes and standards. So feel free to reach out to us and happy to talk with you.